Let's do best case scenario. Philadelphia 76ers best case scenario is that Ben Simmons now newly minted with this monster contract develops his next version of himself to where he is comfortable shooting from the outside. He can knock down a three so that he's a threat from out there. So you've got to guard him out there. He continues to finish at the basket. He develops continuously into a great defender. Ben Simmons grows up a little bit. He becomes a leader, a floor general. He's only 23 years old, continues to grow. And you go, that's a steal. You want that guy's part of your, your team. Tobias Harris, you spent this money on, who got $180 million. Tobias is a tremendous scorer, secondary scorer, picks up the slack when Joel Embiid can't. Tobias Harris fits in well, easily coachable, good demeanor, supportive of other guys. Tobias works out and is worth the money. Joel Embiid stays healthy, and Embiid has the potential already as an all-star to be the most dominant big man of the league outside of Giannis Antetokounmpo, and perhaps the most dominant traditional center, and a guy that on some nights goes for 40 and 20. You simply can't defend him. He's charismatic. He's popular, he's confident, and he fits in perfectly with a young team that has designs on winning NBA championships. And Al Horford comes in on his four-year $109 million deal, and Horford provides your maturity and your polish and your work ethic and sacrificing for the team, and Horford's the perfect locker room guy and this team comes together and they are a machine. The Milwaukee Bucks proved that last year was a one-year wonder, that Giannis now has too much of the focus of other teams on him. They feel the pressure. They lose Malcolm Brogdon to the offseason. The Bucks come back to the pack. The Celtics are never really that good. The Toronto Raptors are no longer the Raptors without Kawhi Leonard. And the Eastern Conference falls right into the lap of the dominant Philadelphia 76ers. They go to the NBA Finals, and the 76ers bring home their first championship since 1983, and for the next four or five years are the wagon in the Eastern Conference. That's best case scenario. And if that's what happens, no matter what you spent on Embiid and Horford and Tobias and Simmons, it's worth it. No matter what, it's worth it. That's best case scenario. But let's go over worst case, okay? Okay? Let's go over worst case. Worst case is Ben Simmons is Chuck Knobloch of shooting. He is Rick Ankiel of the outside shot and mentally can never get over the hump. And so he's always limited in just how effective he can be. He's also a guy that, remember, in his one year in college, did not even get to the NCAA tournament. So he's not a winner that... Last year in the playoffs, Simmons, many very quiet stretches that Simmons ends up being kind of a one-trick pony. He's not really a winner. He's mentally not a leader. And you start going, boy, this guy is not worth a max deal. That Al Horford, at his age, has one or two years of good basketball left in him. But by the end of that contract... When he's 36 and 37 years old, it is an albatross that you cannot move, and Al Horford is a shell of his former self as a big man that just doesn't have anything left. Joel Embiid's foot continues to break, and Joel Embiid continues to have just random flus, and Joel Embiid never stays healthy, and Embiid is a guy that you just look at as unbelievably untapped potential but cannot stay on the floor and does not know how to be a leader because mentally he's just all over the place, maybe trying to be a celebrity, trying to be popular in his own head, highly easily frustrated, and that Tobias Harris is soft. That Tobias you gave all this money to, but he goes into hibernation in the playoffs, and Tobias, when things get a little rough, is not a guy that can take the ball and make things happen as a leader, as a watch me, I'll do it. And Brett Brown turns into a bozo head coach with people in Philadelphia might already say 
He's easily coached around. They lose J.J. Redick in free agency. And suddenly this Sixers team is a little bit like last year's Celtics team. It never comes together. There's a lot of pressure on them. They don't live up to it. And this is a team that just looks like a complete and utter waste of money. That's the worst case scenario. And under worst case scenario, this Ben Simmons deal is going to look absolutely awful. But ultimately, I will tell you this. I'm fine with it. I'm fine because under best case scenario, Ben Simmons is more than what we've seen. And the Sixers are spending money. And the Sixers are aiming for a championship in a league that is open for a championship. And I am here to applaud going for it because far too often owners would rather be frugal and conservative and not spend the money and sit on the sidelines. So I will applaud going for it. But I'll tell you this. If you don't think there is massive risk in this contract, along with all the other spending that the Sixers have done, you're crazy. Because there is. There is the potential that this thing completely implodes and goes sideways. But for the moment, with Butler leaving and your core group of guys right now locked in for four years, what you have to say is, Simmons is going to have to be part of the solution, not the problem. So we've got to sign him to the four years as well. And these four years now, there's massive pressure on us to have to win within this window.